Oh, hey, it's Rob, and I want to talk about lighting a little bit. Uh, I recently found a special online that I couldn't resist. Now, I've been working with video lighting and film lighting for quite a while now, photography lighting. And uh, there are some things that I really, really like. And one of them is a softbox. Now, most of the lights that I have uh, are Fresnels. Uh, they're actually the the quartz, quartz halogen Fresnels, and I've had them for quite a while. And they work really well. I know how to use them. The light is beautiful from them. Uh, but at the same point, they suck up a lot of electricity and they generate a lot of heat. Now, I've been transitioning into LED lighting for quite some time, but as you might know, LED Fresnels are really expensive right now. Um, prices are coming down a little bit as the technology improves, but uh, it's just not something I can afford to just upgrade the entire lighting arsenal to LED Fresnels. However, I uh, found a special online, and it was from GVM, Great Video Macker. Uh, yeah, it's gvmled.com and it was two LED softboxes that are 24 inch I think um, for a remarkably good price and it was at that point I decided that I'm going to get these because softbox lighting ends up looking really good I can use that quite a bit I mean, just even a single point source lighting, if you notice this light that's up here uh, is one of these soft boxes. Now, these are not without their quirks because they are not the big expensive soft boxes. They are not the big expensive LED lighting. There are some minor downsides. So I want to go into that a little bit. And all right, yes, I know I am in the kitchen. Uh, this just happens to be the place that has the most amount of open space right now. All right, just a quick look. This is one of two boxes that came. I've already got the other one set up. Ah. What this comes with is this bag. That contains the soft box, or at least the soft box soft parts. Uh, some nice little, uh, nice little package. We'll get into that. This comes with a Bowens S mount. I, I, I've heard this calls many things. An S mount, a Bowen S mount, a Bowens mount. You know, it's, it's one of these. It's got the three tabs and it pushes in and locks. It's really quite nice. Little instruction manual, uh, qualification certificate. This is the uh, lighting head unit itself. Yes, it comes out of here very easily. Alright. This is the lighting unit. It does have a real nice LED in the front. It is round, which is uh, quite nice. And the quality of it is pretty good too. I mean, I've been kind of surprised. It's got a pretty nice heat sink on it. Uh, coloring and color rendering index on this is supposed to be quite high at around 97. And actually, uh, from looking at it right now, the color is quite nice. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, there are two controls on the back. Well, there's one control, which is the brightness. The other one is the power jack. The power supply itself is one of these bricks. This is a uh, 30 volt, 3 amp, so it's a 90 watt. I think this is an 80 watt LED, if I remember right. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, it's less than 100 watt, but, you know, it's still quite good for what it is. And in this box, is the stand. So it does come with a dedicated light stand. 
Now you've probably seen light stands like this before. This is not a super high end light stand. Uh, the parts are plastic, but they are fairly robust. Does slide okay. Um, in general, uh, this is not a heavy duty light stand. One of the first things I would do is probably use different light stands. One thing I noticed with these is that with this light stand, uh, it's very, very top heavy with a soft box on it. And that makes me feel a little nervous. I'd really want sandbags, but there's not a really good place to load sandbags onto these light stands. So getting better light stands, I mean, I have, I have a bunch already, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm away from all of my film equipment right now, so these will do until I get back to a place where I can be shooting with real light stands. And honestly, they do work okay. You know, they are fairly space saving, you know, so it, it'll do for now. Almost immediately, one of the downsides I can tell you is that the cable on this power supply is not very long. It is not long enough to reach the ground when you have the light stand extended all of the way. Uh, and with the handy dandy plug that goes with it, uh, you don't have a lot of room. So you're going to want extension cords. Um, ideally, I would like to have a longer piece on this, but without doing that, um, trying to rig up some kind of a strap that this can hang on the light stand itself is probably a good idea. This is with the LED on in the, the dimmest setting that I can get it. I don't think I can get it any brighter. It says it's 3%, but I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can get it to come on just barely. Uh, no, that's not going to work. I was trying to get you to see it. Maybe if you look really close, you can, there we go. You can see the individual LEDs. There are a number of them and that actually makes for a very nice, um, pretty decently bright light. Numbers on the back from, you know, zero to a hundred percent. Um, the light works fine with video. Uh, the switching on it is quickly, is quick enough that it's not causing any flicker, which is really quite nice. I know some other units have a little bit of flicker. That's the fan noise. So there is a fan in here to keep it cool, but it's really quiet. I have not noticed it any time that I've been shooting. I mean, if you get, I don't know, three feet away from the light, you can't hear it at all. So quite impressed that there's an active fan that is that quiet. <laughs> yes. The, uh, the mount on here is a little noisy. Um, it actually is kind of nice when you're adjusting it because it makes it easier so that you're not losing control because the softbox is nose heavy. These are the ingredients for the softbox for the GVM uh, light kit. Uh, pardon the light stand, you know, over there. It's, you know, goodness, it's behind the scenes thing. All right, so this is the... Uh, the spider, the mount that has all of the, the things for it. These are the individual spars for the kit. There are eight of them. It is an octagonal softbox. This is a honeycomb that goes inside the softbox. That's, you can use it or not. This is the reflector for the softbox. And these are the diffuser panels. Now there are two. There's a small one and a larger one. They are both removable. So you can use the softbox with 
zero, one, or two diffusers. And I'll show you that in a bit. And this is just a bag for storing all the individual pieces when you're not using it. Okay, one of the first things I want to talk about. On the spider, when you turn it so that the flat side is facing the camera, they're facing you, you know, this is the back side because it's got the mount on it. This is the front side. If you'll notice, there are these dots. There's one dot, two dots, one dot, two dots, one dot, two dots. Now there's also these little squares. Do not mind the squares. Pay no attention to them. They do not matter in this application. There's also this thumb screw, which will lock it down a bit so that you don't have it flopping all over the place. Um, one of the things, I'm not really happy with a thumb screw on this side because that puts it on the inside of the softbox so that you, if you're going to tighten it down, you have to have everything out of the softbox to tighten it down before you can do anything with it. I would much prefer to have it on the back with a nut on the other side. It may do something on that in the future, but for right now, it is what it is. Uh, these are also some some slides. They're just guides to keep it in place and keep it from popping out. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit so that it rotates. These are the spars. Uh, I'll take these out. Oh, they're held in by these rubber bands, which is a pain in the butt, but there you go. Now if you look at these very carefully, you'll see that on one end there is a cylindrical piece that has a flat bottom, and on the other end, there's a smaller cylindrical piece that has a round top. Now, this is important because they do go one way. These pieces go in this way, and they bend to give it its shape. Okay, you don't want to force these right now. Um, but this is just the basics of how they go in. They are a little bit loose. That's normal. Now, this is the tricky part. On the inside of the reflector, you will notice where the seams are for the panels, there are these little Velcro tabs. Now, this is something that they didn't go into in the manual, and I couldn't find anything online. I had to do some searching for different soft boxes. There's a pocket that's in here. However, when they assembled this, they did it quickly and sewed across the pocket. So in order to use this, you need to open up this pocket. And it is one of the more nerve wracking things. But what I found work are two screwdrivers. I've got a small Phillips and a large Phillips. And what I do is go in underneath, break the um, break the stitches and then just make sure that there's enough room with the second one. And then continue all the way around. Break the stitches, poke this in. Break the stitches, poke this in. You can do that for all eight of these tabs. Okay, once you've got these tabs taken care of, the next thing to do is set up your softbox as flattish as you can make it with the spider in the middle. Locate one of these with the one dot. Set this in. Put it in the pocket, like so. And then take another one, go directly opposite, get the direct opposite pocket, and this is where it's tricky. You finagle it around until you can get uh, the opposite one in its place. 
And there you go. That's how you set up a softbox. Well, you know, you just do that a lot more times. Uh, next thing to do is to start with the other cross members. So in this case, you're still going for the single dot. Be careful when you're doing this. Uh, it is springy and it will spring back on top of you if you uh, bend it too far. But we keep going. And actually, another way to do this is to put the end in the pocket first. And then finagle this until it's in place. And there you've got the first four sides of the softbox done. And the next thing you want to do is repeat the same steps for the remaining sides. <clears throat> now there are Velcro pieces that go in here. If you separate them while you're putting it together, it makes it much easier. Time. Incidentally, if you're going to be going to a client shoot, I would really recommend doing the setup and takedown steps and practicing them well before you get to the client site. Because struggling on the floor with one of these does not look professional. All right, once you've got this assembled, the uh, easy thing to do is to put the Velcro straps back on. Uh, this is just a, a light protector. It keeps the light from shooting backwards. Uh, it's not super necessary. It's just neat. It's also a little bit difficult to do. But when you're done, you have the softbox. And this is really quite light. Uh, it's impressively light, considering what it is. Um, but you can now mount this directly as is onto the light and just have a big broad light with as much light as you can possibly get. However, this is a softbox. Okay, I did mention the inner and outer diffusers. Now if you notice in here, there are these little elastic loops that are around the inside just by the uh, individual spokes, the individual spider legs. And then on the inside diffuser, the smaller one, there are these tiny hooks. And if you can't guess what happens, you hook the tiny hooks in to the little elastic loops. Easy assembly trick that I've learned is to get this piece in your hand run the whole thing through the loop, like so, and then pull up and it's attached. It just makes life so much easier. Okay, this is the inner diffuser installed. You can shoot like this. Uh, this will provide a very nice light. It will provide a lot of light. It will be fairly even. There'll be some spill that comes out the sides. Um, it's a little more difficult to control, but it is a lot better than just a big old bare light going in. The outer diffuser has Velcro on the edge. And what you want to do is go on the inside down low. If you want to leave this Velcro strip on the top. I like to go with the opposite sides. just like you assembled a spider.
press all the way across to make sure that the Velcro closes. And that you've got a good grip along the edges. And then just seal the remaining sides. Like so. Now this gives you the most diffusion uh, from the softbox. And this is really, really good lighting. I mean, this is very, very flattering lighting on human skin. Uh, it works really well for portraiture. Uh, it also works really well for um, if you're doing product shots that are relatively small products. It provides this nice, even light that's not harsh. It's really, really very attractive. And the last piece in here is an egg crate again. Now this is designed to do a little bit more lighting control and much the same way. I like to go on the outside and get the opposite sides first but this is folded all over the place so it's a little bit more difficult to control from the beginning. Uh, get the opposing sides. And there you go. Technically this isn't a honeycomb, technically this is egg crate. <laughs> but the idea is the same, it reduces the spill and makes the light more directional going forward. None of these are necessary all the time. I, I tend to like this because I like to have the, the spill controlled more on the outside. Uh, it just gives me a little bit better control over what I'm shooting and make sure that I'm only lighting the things that I want to light. And okay, we've got the light with the Bowens mount, and it is attached. Just that simple, and we have, <laughs> oh, we're adding to the light from above, so it's there. But, I mean, you can see this is a nice, gentle light. This is its lowest setting, and if I turn it up, it's going to blow it out. Uh, but it is a very, very, it's a very, very pretty light. I mean, the, when you're shooting with it, it's, it's really, really nice. So that's a quick look at the GVM 2-pack of softbox lights. Um, as you can see, I actually have both of them up running right now. I've got one over on this side and then another one over on this side, since I could do a 45 degree. Uh, one's a little darker than the other to, you know, make it so that there's some a little bit of shadow detail on the face, otherwise it would just be wash. Um, I like them. I like these quite a bit. Considering what I paid for them, I think this is a really, really good investment for me personally. Um, it, you're gonna, your mileage may vary. I'm not doing a lot of big industrial shoots anymore. So most of the stuff that I'm doing is just, you know, this kind of thing for YouTube. And, you know, I might be doing some other things that are coming up later. I might be doing some beauty shoots or whatever it be, some product shoots. But generally, I'm not going out on location. These are probably not really good for location lights on uh, a long term. Again, first thing, uh, the stands are not really good for big industrial things. They have a very difficult time with, I mean, you'd have, you'd be hard pressed to be able to put sandbags on there without adding some hooks. Um, but the quality of the lights, the, the quietness of the fan, um, again, I'm, I'm in here and there's almost no noise. I can barely hear anything. Uh, I think this LED light over here is making more noise than the fans are, and that one doesn't even have a fan. Um, quality of the light is nice. Uh, the color rendering index seems good. I, I'm impressed. I mean, considering the price, I think this is a really good investment for me. Um, again, 
you know, there are some small niggling things, but they're nothing that is going to get in the way of, you know, if you bring some extension cords, you're probably going to be just fine. Uh, there's no reason that these couldn't be battery operated if you could uh, put together a battery pack and have a regulator for it. That's something for an entire other video. But as far as they go, I'm going to give these a thumbs up. I really like them. Okay, so the head unit bare just by itself puts out a rather broad wash of light, but it does have a hot spot in the middle, um, which is, you know, it's hard to control. So there are things that you can get other than the soft box that it comes with that will attach to this. Now I did say that this was a Bowens mount um, and the Bowens mount is pretty standard. There's a lot of uh, flash photography equipment that's been around since the, I don't know, 60s or 70s, I think, that have used this mount. Now these do not come with the unit um, as is. I had to order these online. But this is a flash bowl with uh, a honeycomb grid. It drops in. There we go. And then once it's in, it's locked into place more or less. And it won't come out until you release with this latch. The honeycomb mount knocks down the area and it sort of makes it a much more directional light. Well, not sort of, it makes it a much more directional light. Um, it is limited in what it can do, but it is quite nice to be able to change this if you want to get that focus down from that big broad light to something that's a little smaller. Works particularly nicely if you're doing product shots. Uh, I hope I got that. Now this also comes with this end cap which has a honeycomb in it, but it's also got this filter that is quite dark. It comes with gels, little gels that you can drop in and then a, I guess a little diffuser to hold them in. But there are four of them, red, green, yellow, and blue, and then a tiny frost and then the little honeycomb. Let's just drop the honeycomb in and see what happens. Honestly, I don't see a lot of difference, but it's nice to know. It's a cool little feature. All right, the third accessory that I ordered and again, these do not come with the light. These are separate. And this one is the one I'm most excited about. If you look, this has a set of barn doors. And a Fresnel lens. This is a Fresnel adapter for a Bowens mount. So we're going to try this. All right, got it on and turned it on. And that is the narrowest beam, I do believe. Well, perhaps not. Okay, there, I do have a honeycomb filter on the front. So let me pull this out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that makes a significant difference. Okay, yeah, you can see how the focus changes where it's gone to that bright spot in the center versus A more broad light and then of course with the barn doors oops <laughs> with the barn doors you can adjust and make um, different shapes and things that work really well if you're trying to get things like just a straight eye light um, the old Star Trek the original series was notorious for that 
Um, now this has nothing to do with the kit, but uh, these need to be tightened. <laughs> these are extremely loose. But that makes me happy. Now I, there, I did find another one that's a, uh, a 10 inch for now, but that's way too big for the stuff that I'm planning on doing. I mean, it would be nice to have, but the use I would get out of it was just not worth the purchase. Until next time, see you guys.